Hi, are you ready for some more Mother of Peace? We are continuing on our journey through the incredible life story of Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, the greatest peace leader in the world. And it's time we tell more people what is going on. The title of this episode is The Descendants of Heaven Are Born to Korea. Human history is an account of human beings trying to grow up and overcome our ignorance. The story of Adam and Eve depicts the scenario where we went off course. And ever since then, God, our heavenly parent, has been trying to help us correct that course and has done so by working through various people at various stages of history. Great people have been raised to lead us. Sometimes they succeed and sometimes they fail and pass on the work to the next person. So how is it that the only begotten daughter and the only begotten son came to be born in Korea? Well, get ready for a journey through time because today we are diving deep into the part where True Mother shares the history of her lineage. The Korean people are descended from the Donggi race, a wise people who studied the stars and were able to ascertain heavenly fortune. They developed a prosperous agricultural-based culture, worshiped God, and loved peace from the time before Christ. The Donggi people established kingdoms based on the name Han. Some people, including my husband, cite records that show the Han people predate the Gojoseon era, which is considered to be the first Korean kingdom. Korea's founding legend, called the Dangun legend, says, we were chosen as the descendants of heaven according to the deep will of God. Think of how extraordinary it is that a nation's founding legend states that they are born as the descendants of heaven. And True Mother's father comes from the original Han lineage, the original birthplace of the Han clan. Listen. I am a member of the Han clan of Chongju in North Chungcheong province, the clan's historical birthplace. Chungcheong means center of the heart that is pure and clear. And Chongju means clear village. When the water in the river or sea is clear, one can see the fish swimming all the way to the bottom. Living in a pure and clear environment of Chongju, I could see the bright spirits of my pure and humble ancestors. This is such a pure and beautiful statement. True Mother's experience from youth was like this. The ability to see clearly. I believe that True Mother has developed a keen ability to see right through people. True Father testified to this. That is what it is like to stand before True Mother. Both father and mother are like that. Let us go on. The Chinese character for my family name, Han, has various meanings. It can mean one, symbolizing God. It can also mean big, as in large enough to embrace all created things in the universe and full, meaning overflowing with abundance. I think we can all agree that True Mother is one with God, embraces all of the universe, and is abundantly giving, right? So True Mother is describing where she comes from. And we now look back into the history of her father's lineage, the Han lineage. Mother shares this story. The founding father of the Han clan, Han Lan, was honored as a loyal patriot of the kingdom of Goryeo. Han Lan's story is this. He built a bureau for agricultural administration 
in a district of Cheongju called Bangsodong and turned a large expanse of land into productive farmland. When a war between Korean rulers broke out, Wangyong, a nobleman and military general, passed through Cheongju on his way to do battle with Gyeon Hyun, the king of the Hu Baekje. Hanlan greeted Wangyong and fed his army of 100,000 soldiers and joined him on the battlefield. Once Wang Gun became king, he declared Hanlan a loyal patriot. Hanlan's reputation as a founding contributor to the kingdom has endured through the ages. And 33 generations after Hanlan, I was born of his lineage. 33 generations later. You know, you may not usually hear much about true mother's father, but you can see that this lineage has great significance for the history of Korea. There is also a special story behind the lineage of true mother's grandmother. Let us read. My maternal grandmother, Jo Won Mo, was a direct descendant of Jo Han Jun a wealthy scholar of the Joseon dynasty. Jo Han Jun lived in a village of tiled roofed houses in Cheongju, a community of people who held government positions. Not far from his home was a bridge across the Dalai River. It was once a sturdy bridge made of neatly piled large stones, but over time it had deteriorated to the point that no one could cross it. No one had the time or resources to fix the bridge, and one day a flood swept it away and buried its stones in the riverbed. As did everyone else, Jo Han Jun knew the prophecy that had been passed down for generations. If a rock carved like a totem pole standing beside the Dalai River Bridge is buried, then the nation of Korea will fall. But if that rock is clearly exposed to the people, then a new heaven and earth will unfold in Korea. If you take a little time to consider how deep this story is, it is incredible. Honestly, for some, at first it may seem like a fairy tale, but think about how incredible this prophecy is. It is just one little bridge on a river and a rock carved like a totem pole, but apparently the fate of the entire nation rests in this story. The Dalai River Bridge was important for another reason as well. In order for Chinese envoys to make their annual trek to the seat of Korea's government in Seoul, they had to cross that bridge. Now it was gone and the government did not have money to rebuild it. In desperation, officials posted a bulletin calling upon the citizens to rebuild the bridge. Grandfather Jo Han Jun accepted the call and rebuilt the bridge using his personal wealth. How much of his personal wealth? Well, all of it, or almost all of it. It is interesting to note that there were no others named here. Only grandfather Jo Han Jun took on the project. Perhaps if they all gave something, it would have been easier. But he took on the whole project. This is an example of incredible faith and patriotism. Let us go on. The sturdy new stone bridge was now high enough for boats to pass under. Grandfather Jo Han Jun spent his entire fortune on this task, and when it was done, all he had left were three brass coins. These were just enough to pay for the new straw sandals that he needed in order to properly attend the bridge dedication ceremony the next day. That night, he had a dream of a grandfather 
in white clothes, who came to him and said, Hanjan, Hanjan, your sincere devotion has moved heaven. I was expecting to send a son of heaven to your family. However, because you bought the sandals, I will send to your family the princess of heaven. Okay, when you read this, what do you think of? Why did the voice from heaven proclaim that he will receive a daughter of heaven instead of a son? Why? I really want to know what you think about this point. Again, he said, this is what he said. I was expecting to send a son of heaven to your family. However, because you bought the sandals, I will send to your family the princess of heaven. I have heard some discuss that because he kept the three brass coins for himself, perhaps he lacked the faith to receive a son or something like that. Do you follow? But when I reflect on this, I think that the sensitivity of Grandfather Joe to consider preparing new sandals to attend the dedication ceremony is beautiful. Think about it. He didn't have anything to prove. He just liquidated his entire wealth for the sake of the bridge, for the sake of the people, for the sake of the nation. He had nothing left but these new sandals. Did he buy them for himself? Or was his motivation to buy them for the sake of others, out of respect for this public bridge? I believe his motivation was heavenly. And therefore, because of that extra attention to detail, heaven sent to his lineage the princess of heaven. <laughs> That's just my thinking. Let us go on. On this foundation of devotion and loyalty, generations later, in the family line of Zhou Hanjun, God sent my maternal grandmother, Zhou Wan Mo. We three women, grandmother Zhou Wan Mo, my mother, and I, all had very deep Christian faith. We were also the only daughters born into our families over three generations. The providence to bring about the birth of God's only begotten daughter on the Korean Peninsula was based upon countless conditions of devotion that started long ago with my ancestors, Han Lan and Jo Han Jan, and continued through the generations to this time. God was preparing for a time when the providence would come to fruition in Korea. We have heard True Mother talk about the timeline of the 400 years of preparation for the birth of True Father and True Mother, starting with Martin Luther King and John Calvin, respectively. This is an extraordinary perspective that we will be hearing more about. The point is that we cannot truly understand the events leading up to the birth of True Parents without understanding the responsibility also of Christianity. And there is a fundamental link between the Christianity in America and Korea. Let us go on. From the moment of the fall, God worked his providence to send his beloved, only begotten son and daughter to humankind. After many foundations were laid, some bearing fruit, others claimed by Satan, his plan developed dramatically in Korea. From the early 1900s, spiritual fires flared up among Pentecostal Korean Christians who received guidance about God's providence. Incredible. You know, on a recent trip to Korea, I was with a group of leaders who were escorted to the Foreign Missionary Cemetery. It's called Yang Hwajin Foreign Missionary Cemetery in Seoul. Many famous missionaries are buried there, many from America, in fact. But the one simple story that really caught my attention was the story of Ruby Kendrick. This young missionary girl was born in Plano, Texas on January 28, 1883. 
after high school, she was interested in pursuing missionary work. So she studied and trained for a few years. Then in 1907, the Methodist Episcopal Church appointed her to serve for five years in Korea. And so she set sail on August 29, 1907. Can you imagine what it was like? What was in her heart at that time? A young 24-year-old woman traveling to the other side of the world. Also, it was quite risky. At that time, Christian missionaries were being persecuted in Korea. It wasn't simple. So what happened? Well, she died. Within just a few months after arriving, Ruby died. While she was there, she served as a language student and Sunday school teacher. But within less than a year of arriving, she got appendicitis and died on June 20, 1908. But her last words were, if I had a thousand lives, Korea should have them all. Isn't that amazing? She means to say that she is grateful to die in Korea. And that if she had the chance to live 999 times more, she would wish to offer each one of those lives in Korea. How is this possible? Well, of course, you could say that she was a good missionary with a heart to do God's will. But in truth, her experience was that she recognized something truly unique and special about Korea. While on her deathbed, she wrote, a final letter to her parents. I'm going to read you this letter. In this letter, you can feel her heart. Dad, Mom, this land, Chosun, is truly a beautiful land. They all resemble God. I see their good heart and zeal for the gospel, and I believe that in a few years it will be a land overflowing with the love of Christ. I saw children walking over 10 miles on barefoot to hear the gospel and the love of God in them encourages me. But the persecution is getting stronger. Two days ago, three or four of those who have accepted Christ less than a week have been dragged away and were martyred. Missionary Thomas and James were also martyred. There were orders from the mission board to return, but most missionaries are in hiding and worshiping with those whom they share the gospel with. It seems that they are all planning to be martyred. I remember you, Mom, when you resisted to the last moment of me leaving the port because of the stories of hate of foreigners and opposition to the gospel. Dad, Mom, perhaps this may be the last letter I will be writing. The seeds that were sown in the backyard before I came out here must be filling our neighborhood with flowers by now. But another seed bears many flowers in the land of Chosen, and they will be the seeds to other nations. I will bury my heart in this land. I realized that this passion for Chosen that I have is not mine, but God's passion toward Chosen. Mom, Dad, I love you. Isn't that beautiful? I feel tingles when I read her letter. And even though she offered her life to share the gospel, I feel that she found God there. Other missionaries of that time also had similar experiences. Many felt that Korea would become the center of God's providence in the future and be the light to the world. So was there really something special happening in Korea? Was heaven really moving to bring about a great awakening there? Is it possible that these great historical lineages of father and mother were prepared for thousands of years for the eventual culmination of God's providence there? 
let us conclude with True Mother's account of it. Many groups believed that the returning Lord would appear in Pyongyang. Exemplary among them was a particular lineal succession of churches. The New Jesus Church, led by Reverend Lee Yong Do, the Holy Lord Church, led by Reverend Kim Song Do, and the Inside the Womb Church, so named to emphasize that the returning Lord would be born a woman, led by Reverend Ho Ho Bin. All three overcame oppression, on one side from non-Christian government and on the other from the mainstream denominations. Amid such pressures, these churches completed the Christian foundation to receive the only begotten son and only begotten daughter. I'm so moved because we understand that despite the thousands and thousands of years of preparation in Korea for father and mother to be born, we also needed the foundation, the culmination of the Christian foundation to conclude there. And it was not easy. There was, there, there was antagonism from, from the locals. And eventually there was also antagonism from the mainstream mainline churches in America. But without these missionaries going to Korea ahead of time, offering their lives, then these, the final bloodline, the final seeds of God's providence wouldn't be able to sprout forth in the lives of father and mother there in Korea. It's like God was working a miracle the whole time without anybody knowing it. You know, one of the things that I marvel about the life and leadership of True Father is how he captivated the attention of the entire world, trailblazing a global ministry. And all the while, he kept hidden God's best kept secret, the only begotten daughter. Think how many times you saw True Parents and how many times True Father took to the stage as you became fixated on his every word. Think of all the controversy and animosity that was thrown towards him and all the while sitting by his side, often quietly, was our True Mother, the only begotten daughter. You know the technique that a magician uses to protect their secret? is to keep your eyes occupied over here while the other hand is doing something else. Sometimes when I think about true parents, this is what I see. True father was completely out there telling the world, telling the truth to the world while our mother was right there beside him, protected. I feel the same way about Korea. Who knew? Who knew? Who, who would have known that such miracles would occur in this land of Korea? Who saw it coming? Even now, do we fully understand the significance of the providence in the land of Korea? Right now, at the time of this message, we are embarking on the final stages of total mobilization for the sake of the heavenly unified Korea. This time will absolutely come. Those of us who are wise will pay attention and support this providence and probably study Korean as well. The descendants of heaven are born to Korea. Korea has already achieved the greatest miracles in human history and no one else knows about it yet, only you. The secrets of our heavenly parent have been revealed to you. Until next time, God bless you.